Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to generate design strips for a complex slab example in RAM concept. In this particular video, we're going to pay special close attention to the area of our model that contains a reinforced concrete beam. Now, let's go ahead and refamiliarize ourselves with the model. If I were to take a look at the latitude design spans plan, these two design spans are actually going through a reinforced concrete beam. You could see that the beam is through the column strip and then we have regular portions of slab through the middle strip area. In addition to that, if you wanted to get some more familiarity, you can go to the element perspective plan and I can see very clearly what's going on here. Here I have a reinforced concrete beam that is basically connecting two different slabs that are at different elevations. Finally, Let's also go ahead and take a look at the reinforcement plan and see that this stepped area of slab at the reinforced concrete beam was detailed so far as a slab. Now let's return to the latitude design spans plan and take a closer look at the properties for these two design spans. Now when we set up the default properties for our design spans, we set them up that would be appropriate for the majority of the slab, which was a traditionally reinforced, elevated, two-way concrete slab system. Now that works for the majority of our system, but not for these concrete beams. I'm gonna to wanna to pay special close attention to some of the column strip and middle strip properties. Specifically, I want to change the minimum shear reinforcement requirement to shear and torsion for the column strip. Again, the beam is going through the column strip, I want to change the torsional design system to a beam, and I want to change the design system to a beam. Now, what does this do for us? Well, when you set the design system equal to a beam, this will force RAM concept to check the design using the code provisions intended for beams, which would be ACI 318, Chapter 9, as opposed to the one-way slab sections, which would be in Chapter 7, or the two-way slab systems, which would be in chapter eight. So this basically tells the program which code provisions to check for the design. Now, in addition to that, whenever you do have a reinforced concrete beam, you're gonna to wanna to unselect this checkbox. So I want the column strip to be designed as a beam, but I want the middle strip to still be designed as a slab. The last thing we're gonna take a look at is the strip generation area. And here where the program calculates the width of the column strip, I want to change this to code T beam. The last thing I'm going to review in this dialog is the cross-sectional trimming area. Now this may depend on what type of system you have. For me, in this particular model, I have a reinforced concrete beam where there is a pretty significant step in slab. So I'm going to leave the cross-sectional trimming set to none. If I set it to T or L, it may actually cut off the top or bottom portion of that reinforced concrete beam, which is not exactly what I'm looking for. Now, as always, if you want to review your trimming, go ahead and perform a calculation and take a look at your perspective plans for your design strips. That'll give you a good idea of where the shear core is, and then you can use your engineering judgment if it is appropriate for your system. Now that we've gone through this information, let's go ahead and click OK. And I'm gonna perform a new calculation. Now to finish up this workflow, let's go ahead and review the reinforcement area. And I can see that the reinforced concrete beam has now been reinforced as a beam system with longitudinal bars and stirrups for shear and torsion. At this point, this concludes our process for modifying our design spans in our reinforced concrete beam area. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.